Welcome to the wide world of esports, the show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, my guest is Reginald Nasawa, joining us from Ghana. Our topic is esports in Africa, creating jobs and opportunities for youth. Welcome, Reginald. Thank you, Catherine. I'm happy to join you on the show. Now, you are the first guest I've had from Africa, so this is really exciting. So I'm sure a lot of people really have no idea what's going on in, um, in esports in Ghana. So tell us about esports in Ghana. Wow. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I would want to say hi to all those who will be watching or listening to the show. Um, yeah, so esports in Ghana, yeah. I, um, what I want to say is that all over Africa is full of very young people. I think with all the continents around the world, Africa has the youngest um, population. So esports, it's something that the youth, even older people, um, enjoy. So esports is is growing rapidly, especially with the advent of mobile, um, because um, growing up, sort of, it was for the the rich or middle income to rich people who could afford to have consoles in their, in their homes. So let's say if in the whole neighborhood, um, you had a friend who belonged to a wealthy family, you would obviously go to his uh, home to you know, try and get a round of um, Mortal Kombat or Mario to play. So, but with uh, a lot of mobile phones out there now, everybody can, Everybody who owns a phone can, can now take part in uh, esports. And also, all over Africa, we have these game centers, which are sometimes they are in one little kiosk down the corner where you go and then you pay some money and then you're able to uh, use a console, you know, play with a friend. And there are so many things. And yeah, so it is, it is exciting now. But now we have more people owning consoles, small people owning mobile phones. And we, ha we even have people who have established, there's even an esports academy in, in, in Ghana now. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's exciting and it's growing all over the country, yeah. You, uh, you answered a really important question that I had, and that was about whether, the, whether games were played on mobile versus consoles versus PC. And you know, it's interesting because I have had a guest from Africa and I've had uh, people appear from other parts of the world. I'm not Africa, I meant India. Um, and they have mentioned that they use mobile um, phones a lot for gaming. Um, are, now, you mentioned the young population gaming using mobile phones. Does this go up to older ages? I mean, are, are like their parents gaming at all or is it just the young people? Yeah, I think um, some of the parents are also very, very good. Uh, um, are also interested in gaming. In fact, you know, the whole idea of um, gaming is also a little bit in African culture. So there were several, um, you know, type of games with uh, rocks and other things, we had our own form of chess and uh, board games and the rest. So the older population who, who grew up with these things as kids, now that they saw, um, you know, animations and video graphics and everything, it also got their interest. And a lot of times too, with families, parents also spend time to, to play games with their kids and for, the, the, the people who grew up in uh, the, the 80s come, and especially in the 90s coming up all got exposed to Nintendo and, and uh, um, we used to call one game, I don't know how you guys call it in America, but we called it a family game. Yeah, we called it family game. And, you know, so yeah, across all ages, people enjoy games, but it is mostly, you know, from let's say people in, they are 40s and below. They are the main uh, category of pure gamers. Yeah. So you mentioned the Esports Academy. 
Um, tell us about that. Yeah, so um, some of our young people in, in, in Accra, that's our capital, came up with this eSports Academy that is providing training for, for people to become professional gamers and to create, you know, to get um, jobs and opportunities and build careers out of gaming. I might say that, you know, let's say 10, 15 years ago, or yeah, or even 20 years ago, a lot of people, young people who were in games, who were playing games, especially for, 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 for boys, were seen as, you know, rascals or rowdy people, you know, because people will not go to school, they'll go to the game centers, some of them will, you know, go there and then the, the money they are supposed to use, you know, to buy food in school, they will take it to the game centers and all that. So people had this kind of negative perception about allowing their their kids or their children to go to some of these game centers because they saw it to be gambling. And then they just saw the negative side of it. Yeah, right. But with time, with things like the Esports Academy, that, that, um, that uh, notion is changing. And, and even the, 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 there are places where families can hire, companies can go there with for team bonding exercises and so many other things that, you know, that one can do. So there's a lot of awareness. I think that's the word awareness that is growing, that is seeing esports as something that, you know, has a very, very good um, positive and, you know, social impact if utilized rightly. Yeah. So the awareness is growing about uh, esports and thanks to organizations or, or setups like the Esports Academy. Yeah. So what kind of courses do they offer at the Esports Academy? Yeah, so um, from uh, uh, game design to um, setting up tournaments, you know, how to set up an esports um, tournament, how to manage a tournament. And also, uh, it's, they also provide an um, um, avenue for people to, to sharpen their skills. Because like I said, a lot of people who are interested in gaming may not necessarily have the right consoles or equipment. So when you go to the eSports Academy, these equipment are already made available. So a lot of people can, can have the chance to practice on some of these things and get coached by professional or, yeah, let me say, experienced um, gamers. Yeah. So what kind of job opportunities are there in Africa for um people who are interested in uh, having a career in gaming? Yeah, um, I think uh, I must say that right now in Africa, the biggest challenge is, is, is jobs and unemployment, youth unemployment. That is what, you know, it's, it's, it's the biggest because we have a very young population but you know, with very limited opportunities. So esports is one area that is addressing that. And even though it is still growing and we are not there yet, but there are several opportunities that and jobs that esports have created. So now we have showcasters, we have commentators for esports events, we have we have reporters for esports tournaments. That is also a job, you know, people writing articles and telling stories. That's also one, one, one big job that is creating. We also have photographers. We have photographers, we have videographers who are producing these, uh, uh, um, you know, tournaments. And then even the streamers also, people who are streaming these uh, esports um, tournaments. Then, then when it comes to events, uh, organizing the events from ticketing, even, uh, you know, jerseys, people who are producing the jersey, selling the jersey. So there are so many. We also have team managers. So there are so many opportunities that is, is coming up. We, I belong to the eSports um, uh, family, the, the eSports Association of Ghana, and we have a lot of members or everybody doing something in the eSports industry. So it is really creating avenues, both for 
for for boys and girls, you know, everywhere, everyone is 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 getting uh, a bite of the esports cake, if I'll say it like that. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a great cake. It's going to be a, hopefully a really yeah. <laughs> many layers of cake. Anyway, um, yeah. so let's talk about different countries in Africa. Um, uh, is Ghana like more evolved in esports, or are there other countries that are you know um, moving forward? more rapidly what about south africa and nigeria yeah i think um when it comes to esports um south africa uh, is undoubtedly number one because of their exposure their infrastructure um of course there are more companies and more brands and a lot of people who come to africa you know Say so when they've got South Africa, this yeah, but if you want to really come to Africa, you should come to Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, so South Africa is doing great. They are great um, players and teams and brands, and there's there's a whole that's that's in um, the industry is well developed in in um, South Africa. Also, when you look at North Africa, also places like Egypt, Morocco, they are also you know well developed. And then for Sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria is, is, is they are doing very, very well in, in esports. They have a lot of uh, gamers. They, the, there are a lot of um, esports startups that are coming. Uh, there's even a Nigerian startup, Gamer, that organized um, an esports championship um, across Africa. So Nigeria is also a very, very big um, space. And also Kenya in the east of Africa are also doing amazing with a lot of um, great players, great teams there. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, activities going all over, all over Africa. Yeah. When you mention um, competitions between African countries, is there a problem with ping or delay in servers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Um, um, most of the servers are are not um, situated in Africa, so of course um, there is. And then also um, the internet infrastructure isn't that great all over all um, um, all across Africa, so that poses a challenge for um, these online gaming. So sometimes what happens is for the competitions, all the gamers meet at one place, one venue to overcome that. But moving forward, um, we are hoping that you know the infrastructure gets better, and um, we do have a lot of um, investments in 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 you know in pinks and you know get get that um, set up because it will really really help and give the teams um, an opportunity and give the players an opportunity to become competitive, you know, globally. Yeah. Sure. And um, how did you get involved in esports? Yeah, so, well, it's uh, of uh, it's kind of an interesting story. But I was a, a gamer myself growing up. I didn't have a console, but I used to cry every day worrying my mom to uh, get me a console. So um, yeah, so I started with all just like how every typical Ghanaian, you know, started uh, playing games like Mario, Mario Kart, Sonic. Uh, and then we moved over more FIFA and, you know, those kind of games. And I've always had the, 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 the heart or the spirit to be an entrepreneur. So um, together with a friend who came up with a, startup called Ticket Malawi, it's a ticketing company. And then we decided that um, we were going to support esports um, by providing a means of, by which um, esports tournament organizers could mobilize revenue when they sell tickets for their events. And also my good friend from Burbank in California, Tom Leonard, also reached out and then brought me on the esports change lives uh, project where I, 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 I currently work with him as the producer, um, networking, esports, 
in all developing countries, even outside Africa. Yeah. So that's how I got into esports. Sure. And, and Tom Leonard tells me that you are find some amazing guests for um, for that podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's been a great experience. It's been a, a great experience um, getting guests from all over the world. I mean, we've covered almost everywhere. We've been to the Philippines. We've been to Greece. Uh, yeah, we've been to Indonesia, everywhere. And then I, and, and, and India. And what is happening is that it's given us a lot of um, uh, confidence that esports, no matter the language barrier or race or whatever, esports um, e is able to bring all of us together because we all have, in developing countries, we all have the same similar uh, challenges with infrastructure, with financing and everything, but everyone is innovating, you know, to, to overcome these challenges and, 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 and open the industry wide. So I'm very happy I joined the, the Game Exchange Live project. Yeah, you know, um, being on an island, the most remote uh, island chain in the world, uh, the islands of Hawaii, we have some of the same problems and we're seeing some of the same uh, things happen. Like, uh, you know, people getting really excited about esports and developing it, even though we are not really in a place that, you know, we're so far away that there we have that ping issue and, and uh, um, you know, we're kind of behind the mainland US, but, you know, we're working on it. So I, I, I think that, that uh, Hawaii people can kind of relate to some of what you're talking about. Um, so what game, what esports games are most popular in Africa? Yeah, the, the esports, well, I think um, most of the uh, popular, for me, okay, <laughs> What I see is that FIFA is very, very popular because uh, soccer is a big thing in, in Africa. So you have a lot of uh, uh, FIFA players in Africa. Also, uh, Call of Duty is popular. Um, you have uh, PUBG is also popular in Africa. Um, you also have... Um, uh, games like um, Mortal Kombat is also very popular. Uh, Tekken, there's uh, fighting games. Yeah, so these are these, yeah all popular. And then yeah, so these are some of the the popular games around, but all across Africa. In Africa, it's about 54, 55 countries. So <laughs> there's a lot of uh, diversity and interest in there. But FIFA runs across. Yeah. Sure. Um... So how did the, the pandemic impact esports in Africa, do you think? Yeah, so um, it did really have um, uh, a big impact because like I said, because of paying and infrastructure and all that, a lot of uh, the tournaments are organized in person, right? So they all meet, let's say at the National Theater, or in a hotel conference room, or in a school, and then get these uh, tournaments out there. So with the pandemic and the lockdowns, it didn't enable that. So a lot of these tournaments had to, um, had to be held online. And because of internet, it, it, it did uh, bring some challenges in there. But on the other side, on the flip side also, it got, people to bring out their consoles <laughs> because they have more time and practice and practice and perfect their skills and train more so that they'll become more competitive when they show up um, at tournaments. So that is why it did, yes. But uh, after that, you know, I think most of us in Africa, we came out of lockdowns very early. So after that, there's this renaissance because people, really looked at it, you know, looked at what they wanted to do. And people are now confident and bold to say, I want to consider eSports as my main, uh, and, um, um, my main uh, source of income or my main profession. Yeah, so 
people are more convinced now and then they have more convictions about um, esports and the potential that it has. When we talk about youth, you know, it, we have to consider what parents are thinking about esports and gaming these days. And you mentioned some challenges about that. Do you think that perceptions are changing as time goes on in Africa uh, in terms of how parents feel about their uh, kids gaming and even taking on esports as a profession? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it is changing, though there's a lot, there's still lots uh, of work to, you know, to be done because, um, you know, um, most times parents here would prefer their children to do something that the society recognizes. Like, let's say you're a nurse, maybe like you're a doctor, you work in a bank. Those are the traditional work, work that, that, that is going on. But what is happening now is that we have... Uh, a generation of more educated people than the generations behind. And with that education, it has, is bringing up the opportunity more. Now, um, some schools are including esports in their, their setup. I, I, I was recently at a, um, at a university, a new university that had, you know, uh, PlayStation consoles at the lounge, right? And then they saw that it's the way for the, the 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 students to release uh, relieve stress, you know, in school. So that perception is changing, especially with mobile gaming. You know, uh, there because now even some of the parents are also getting involved in in the in the in the gaming. And also one one key thing is that it is being attached to STEM education, right? Because a lot of now people want to get their kids to learn how to code at a at a little age to get them to learn how to understand computers at a little age. And one of the fastest ways to get your child interested in computing and graphics and user interface and all those nice, nice things is to get them um, to, 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 to go into esports. And with that, you can tell them, okay, if you take the coding and understand seriously, you can end up as a game developer. And the kids are excited about it, yeah. Sure. So what is your day job? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, the, my, so my day job, I'm in the Air Force in Ghana uh, was, uh, as an engineering officer. Uh, yeah, working on, I, I manage a team of technicians to make sure things are running smoothly at the Air Force Base and at the airport in, um, in Takrady. But Takrady is a beautiful place. Um, yeah, and I'll invite all your listeners to come and visit us one day here in Africa. They'll love it, yeah. Absolutely, that would be fantastic. So. Um, you know, early on, I interviewed, um, uh, I had a couple shows where I interviewed uh, people on the, the U.S. Army esports team. Does the Air Force in Ghana have an esports team? Um, unofficially, <laughs> because we, 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 um, we compete among ourselves a lot. Um, especially when you move to a place and esports is part of military life. I remember anywhere you go on any operations, as soon as you get into the mess, you get there and then it's all esports so unofficially. But I think it's something that the Esports Association of Ghana is trying to do to get, you know, everything formalized. But unofficially, among ourselves, we know, <laughs> we know the players and we play among ourselves, but it's not, it's not official. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe maybe in the future you'll have an official esports team. Um, they use the U.S. Army esports team to recruit um, members of the, you know, recruit people to be in the Army. And wow. uh, so uh, that's their tactic, get them interested in, in joining the esports team and then and then they'll be interested in joining. So um, that's a, a potential tool for you in the future now that you know that. Yes, yes, I would love, the, I would love us to have one. So yes. what do you think the eSports, the future of eSports is in Africa? Yeah, I think um, it is a very, very big um, 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 future. I think um, the world hasn't really paid attention to it, but um, I think people should get uh, ready to see a lot of um, 
African gamers, uh, it's already started happening, you know, um, getting more notice because the talent is there. We are building the opportunity and, you know, yeah, it's great. It's a great fit. I'm, I'm so excited about uh, the future of esports in Africa. I'm so, so excited because it's, 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 it's really great. When you have young people who are passionate, ready to learn and talented, anything can happen. Anything is possible. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Reginald, thank you so much for being with us today. And, uh, um, you know, we'll look forward to watching what happens in Ghana and in Africa. Thank so, you, too, for having me. All right. Thank you uh, to our viewers for joining us today. In two weeks, my guest will be um, Micah Medeiros, the founder of the Empire team and two of his players. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.